Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe so your best friend knows how you feel about them next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Catra from She-Ra, a girl that isn't great at communicating her feelings, but ends up sad, bitter, and alone. Basically, she's a cat person. They seem to be very good friends. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need cat skills, and I'm not talking about the mountains in New York. Next, we need incredible strength. Your rival is the strongest lady in the universe, and you wrestle her down pretty regularly. Finally, we'll make sure that we can fight wearing anything, whether that's leather armor or a formal suit that you pull off surprisingly well for a feral cat person. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want. As long as you're not terrible at rolling, you should hit the multi-classing requirements. Seriously, if you don't hit the multi-classing requirements for this one, your character's probably just gonna die before too too long anyway, maybe have a backup character ready. Strength is the only thing we need to multi-glass and it's also our top stat, though technically it won't be after racial bonuses, whatever, you're athletic, that's all I'm trying to say. Dexterity after that, you're just as nimble as you are strong, actually more so after racial bonuses, whatever, you're acrobatic, that's all I'm trying to say. Constitution next, you've got to have thick skin to take hits from she partially because she hits so hard, but also because why is she attacking you, your best friends? Follow that up with wisdom, cats tend to have pretty great senses. Intelligence is a little low, you are basically a child soldier, actually you still kind of are a child soldier, they tend not to get most of those book smarts. And we'll dump charisma. You're not great at persuading people and your leadership skills have caused a lot of defecting. Catra is a tabaxi, that should be pretty clear from the name, giving her plus two dexterity and plus one charisma, 60 feet of dark vision, cat's claws to make your unarmed attacks deal 1d4 plus your strength modifier and slashing damage, and give you a 20 foot climbing speed so you can turn a wall into a scratching post. You can use feline agility to double your movement speed for a round, though you can't do it again until you move zero feet and around, but after you've blasted 60 feet, you're probably close enough to just carve your enemies up. You don't need to move again. Cast Talent gives you perception and stealth proficiency for free, and the soldier background will give you athletics and intimidation. You're not really great at talking, but you can scream at people like a cat that hasn't been fed for two whole minutes. We'll kick things off as a fighter, letting us grab two skills from the fighter list. Acrobatics is a given, and we'll scoop up survival as well, in case you have to make it on your own for some reason. For your fighting style, unarmed fighting from the class feature variants, unearthed Arcana will let you deal 1d6 bludgeoning damage with your unarmed attacks, or 1d8 if you have two free hands. You can also deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage when you grapple someone, and add that extra damage to attacks you make against a grappled foe, so don't be afraid to give them a big hug. You also get Second Wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. Pretty useful, since it's not like the party you're in is going to have a healer. Second level fighters get Action Surge, letting you make two actions instead of one once per short rest. Cats tend to hunt with short but drastic bursts of energy. For my cat, that means crossing the living room in a dead sprint to nap in the kitchen. Hopefully you do a little bit more than that. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and champion is best for fighters who want to keep things simple. Improved critical lets you land a critical hit on a 19 or a 20. I know Battlemaster is technically more optimal for damage output, but crits are fun and this will get us some more athletic stuff a bit later as well. For stats, fighters get an ability score improvement and this is really why we're making a fighter. You need all of your physical stats to be as high as possible. Start by rounding off your strength and constitution modifier to punch better and not die as quickly. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once with your action, or four times thanks to an action surge to punch with some incredible speed. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement. More strength would be good at the moment, as we're about to make strength the primary stat for this build. We're going to do that by jumping over to Barbarian. First level Barbarians can Rage, which gives you resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, advantage on strength checks and saves, and bonus damage to strength-based attacks for a minute. Mixing this with your capped strength modifier and action and Surge can let you unload all of that unchecked, untherapied anger you've been storing inside. You also get Unarmored Defense, making your AC 10 plus your Dexterity modifier and Constitution modifier while you're not wearing armor. So if you want to crash a Princess Prom in a formal suit, that's an option for you. I feel like the undone bow tie really brings the whole thing together. Second level barbarians get reckless attacks, letting you give yourself advantage on attack rolls as long as you don't mind giving your enemies advantage on attacks against you. Catra has a tendency to be a little overzealous, but free advantage with a doubled crit chance is really fun. You also get danger sense, giving you advantage on dexterity saves against traps or spells that you can see, helping you always land on your feet, with your feet outside the radius of an explosion. 
Third level barbarians can choose a primal path. Berserkers can frenzy while they're raging, letting you attack as a bonus action, even though you'll suffer a level of exhaustion once that rage is over. Still, that means five attacks with a plus seven damage modifier and three attacks after you've used your action surge with even more coming later. Fourth level barbarians get another ability score improvement. Cap off the strength for the biggest punch as possible, not to mention big grapples if you want to utilize that part of the unarmed fighting style. The more you need a hug, the better you'll be at hugs. Back over to Fighter now, 7th level champions get Remarkable Athlete, meaning you can add half your proficiency bonus to skill checks you're not proficient with that use your Strength, Dexterity, or Constitution modifier. You can also add your Strength modifier to the distance of a running long jump, making your horizontal jump distance 25 feet, and your vertical jump distance is still only 8 feet because that doesn't get a bonus, but oh well. 8th level fighters get another ability score improvement, and why don't we start working on our Dexterity now? It'll help with our acrobatics checks and boost our AC so we're harder to hit. That's always is nice. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest. For Catra, I might call this spiteful resolve. You're just too mad to lose. It's also worth noting, you can use these on death saving throws to make sure that you don't die. Always nice. Tenth level champions grab another fighting style. Superior technique from the new class feature variants under Turkana lets you learn a maneuver from the Battlemaster style and gives you a d6 superiority die to use it with. Disarming Strike forces a strength saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and strength modifier on a creature you hit with an attack. Failing that, they have to drop something that they're holding, but you also get to add a d6 to the damage. Shira has a ridiculously high strength save, but if you can get that sword out of your hands, it's gonna be very helpful. 11th level fighters get another extra attack, letting you make three attacks per round, four attacks with frenzy, or seven attacks with an action surge and frenzy. So against a grappled foe, that would be 7d4 plus 7d6 plus 56 bludgeoning damage, not counting any crits you get from reckless attack and improved critical, which should be happening fairly often. With all that damage, who needs friends? You do. You really do. Just call her. Just just call her. Maybe you can talk it out. Figure out what's going on. 12th level fighters get another ability score improvement so we can cap off our dexterity here for incredible evasive skill. I mean, not really. You're not proficient in dexterity saving throws, but plus five isn't bad. You could also use your dexterity score for whip attacks. It's a finesse weapon with reach that deals 1d4 damage, but you could put disarming strike on it to take someone's sword away from 10 feet away. That's pretty great. 13th level fighters get another use of Indomitable they can use per long rest. I recommend using this on something that you're good at, but just rolled poorly on. It stinks to use this for something and then not succeed. 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement. Let's move on to our constitution for better AC and more HP. Don't forget that leveling up your constitution scales your HP retroactively as well, so you get plus 18 health, not plus 1 at this level. 15th level champions get superior critical, letting you critically hit on an 18 as well as a 19 or 20, which when combined with your reckless attacks makes you 6 times more likely to roll a crit. I think think. There could be more nuance to statistics that I'm not aware of. I was adopted by a skeleton man who trained me to fight for evil, so I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. Our capstone is the 16th level fighter for one more ability score improvement, and we can almost cap off our constitution. If you rolled well, I hope you did. Maybe you can actually do it. I really just want what's best for you. Now, let's talk about some options we didn't go with for this build. First of all, Monk. Catra's very mobile, and she fights unarmed most of the time, but I didn't want to use Monk because we already have unarmored defense from Barbarian, and it works better for us investing in Constitution rather than in Wisdom. Catra's a little hard-headed, and she's not great at reading people, so I didn't want the Wisdom score to get too high. Another idea would be Rogue, but you do have to be using a finesse weapon, which your fists will never be, even if you did go Monk and were able to use your Dexterity modifier for your unarmed attacks. Just because that's the definition of a finesse weapon, that doesn't make it a finesse weapon. So really, your whip would be the only thing we'd be getting sneak attack with, and you're more likely to claw people up or punch them in the face. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you are a goddess of physicality, with enough strength and dexterity to conquer any challenge that involves lifting or swifting. You've also got a ton of attacks with a capped modifier and extra, extra damage thanks to a little bit of rage. Finally, you're a tank with with likely over 200 HP and 19 AC to keep you kicking and clawing all the live long day. 
For weaknesses, your mind is not nearly as sharp as your claws. Intelligence saving throws can be nasty to fail, and illusions are going to be pretty effective on you. You're also not great at charisma, meaning that you're going to be unpopular with NPCs you're trying to curry favor with. Finally, despite all of your attacks, you got no magical damage, so some higher level foes could be an issue. But She-Ra doesn't resist bludgeoning or slashing, and she's the only person you care about. The only person you care about beating, is what I meant to say. Channel your rage into a flurry of claws and fists, and outlast Little Miss Goody Two-Shoes and her new friends. Just don't stop fighting long enough to consider why everyone you care about keeps leaving you, or you're gonna be an emotional catastrophe. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. And check out Tulak and Mango, where we do long form let's plays for more Tulak goodness.